Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us on this gorgeous fall day. Um, I am uh, really uh, pleased to welcome you to our beautiful new public safety building today uh, to discuss our, uh, our, uh, is it our daffodil planning uh, event here, but it is, of course, uh, focused on uh, domestic violence and focusing attention on domestic violence and things we can and should be doing in our community. Uh, today, I'm very pleased to be joined by City Council Chair Kyle LaMalfa, uh, Police Chief Chris Burbank, Fire Chief Kurt Cook, uh, Kerry Jones, who's the Program Officer of YWCA here, and a special guest speaker, Janet Wagner, whose family has been victimized by gun violence. This morning, we remember and honor victims of gun violence and their families, and to plant daffodils as a symbol of hope in our community. This week, YWCA celebrates the 19th annual Week Without Violence. So we congratulate them on their long-standing long commitment here. Week Without Violence is a public awareness campaign with a series of events designed to educate, encourage thoughtful conversation, renew the search for solutions to violence in families and communities here and around the world, and strengthen our sense of personal and shared responsibility for keeping one another safe from harm. As residents of Salt Lake City, we must find ways to prevent violence and provide education strategies for the community. I encourage everyone to unite today and move forward together to help decrease and prevent violence. Now I'm pleased to introduce uh, Chief of Police Chris Burbank, and he'll be followed by City, City Council Chair Colin Alpha and Janet Wagner and Kerry Jones. Thank you very much, Mayor. Each and every day in this country, and far too often in the city of Salt Lake, we have victims of gun violence. And no matter what side of the issue you are on, as far as gun control and gun advocacy, you cannot argue that individuals who should not have access to firearms obtain them and use them to commit violent acts in our communities. As long as we continue to frame this debate in the sense of who should own guns and who shouldn't own guns, we lose sight of those victims of crime. And that is a travesty. We should do more. In fact, the public should expect more from officials who run and govern this country. We need to do something to prevent violence from occurring in our neighborhoods. I am pleased to join with individuals to stand up and say, you know what, we've had enough. It is time to do something different. And the opportunity to plant a daffodil in remembrance of some of those individuals who have lost their lives to gun violence. Again, we can do better. I invite everyone to join us. In fact, the week concludes with a run on Saturday sponsored by the Salt Lake City Police Foundation and the YWCA, a race against violence in the avenues to stand up and say, you know what, we are going to do better. So I thank you very much and I sincerely appreciate the support of the mayor and the city council in coming out and saying, yep, we are committed in Salt Lake City to not have another victim of domestic violence or gun violence. Thank you. It was July 6, 2008. Uh, at that time, I was a volunteer organizing a farmer's market on Salt Lake City's west side. <clears throat> I, got, I got involved in volunteering and, and community service because I was committed to making uh, a better place in, uh, in Glendale. On that date, M Maria del Carmen Manchaca was killed. She was seven years old in her front yard, uh, right a block away from where we hosted the farmer's market. And I can't remember a more uh, desperate time in, in the life of a community activist to feel like you had totally failed. Community members spontaneously gathered at the site of the shooting and erected a makeshift memorial and as the TV cameras arrived to get the feel, the pulse of the community, 
uh, I noticed the man who avoided the cameras approached the fence and, and, uh, and, and was escorted inside. And that man was the newly elected mayor, Ralph Becker. And I, at that moment, I, I realized that although policymakers can't solve all the problems, policymakers are above all human beings. And at that time, although comfort was perhaps all, all Mayor Becker could give the family, uh, I realized that there was a, a, would be a deep abiding commitment to public service and to curbing violence uh, that would be deeply personal. And I suppose that's when I realized that policymakers uh, can, can make a difference. So as, as I remember uh, Maria Menchaca today and um, other uh, victims of gun violence, I renew my commitment to Salt Lake City and to victims of, of gun violence. And so thank you, Mayor Becker, and thank you for having me. Hello, my name is Janet Wagner, <clears throat> excuse me. I would like to thank the YWCA for inviting me today and to be given the opportunity to share my daughter's story. Um, I want to start out with her very beginning and then progressively go forward. <clears throat> this is called Heidi's story. My beautiful angel was the last of eight children. Heidi was a welcome addition to our large family. Her four brothers, excuse me, her four sisters and three brothers were excited and attentive. We all loved and cherished our baby. Crystal, her oldest sister, loved curling and styling her dark, silky hair. Heidi always had the perfect curly do. From the days of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, especially Donatello, our Heidi donned her turtle outfit cranked up the TV volume full blast, jumping up and down, singing the turtle theme song. She was absolutely adorable. During early elementary years, Heidi was quite the tomboy. She developed a competitive personality and boundless energy of, for physical activities. She liked biking through the neighborhoods with her best friend, Hen, but her true calling was basketball. As one elementary friend acknowledged, Heidi always kicked our behinds in basketball. Heidi's numerous attributes included her inherent ability to maintain and nurture long-term friendships. Many of her friends were cultivated from her elementary school days. Heidi's, great, Heidi's quest through junior high and high school took on some non-tradition excuse me, some non-traditional twists and turns. Heidi simply wasn't a morning person. Or perhaps she got tired of hearing my good morning song to wake her up. So she chose alterna alternative and creative ways to complete high school. Thankfully, they worked. Heidi's vibrant beauty, her amazing expressive dark eyes, and her enormous smile attracted people to her. Her ingratiating enthusiasm for life, fun, and adventure were an integral part of her personality. Heidi used to adore bowling, probably because she was better at it than most of us. She would goof around, trying all different ways to make the pins fall. Side throws, over her head tosses, between her legs, backwards. Honestly, she would still score higher than most of us. Heidi made life fun. Heidi loved the excitement of planning a family adventure. She had an uncanny way of convincing her family to join in. The last adventure began, began at the Dinosaur Museum at Thanksgiving Point. We spent time checking out all the cool science experience, experiences. Later that afternoon, on to the Sundance tram for an exhilarating ride up the mountainside taking a breath of nature's beauty and wonder. 
For dinner, down to Provo for a Chinese dinner at the Rice King. Heidi decided to try the vegetarian menu and said she enjoyed it. This was the conclusion of a most remarkable and memorable day. Sadly, this would turn out to be the last adventure with Heidi. At Heidi's place of employment, her job description was both challenging and demanding. She had a strong work ethic. Her future plan was to excel to a supervisor position, which she was near to obtaining. Unfortunately, that plan wouldn't reach fruition. On October 1st, 2012, our beautiful, radiant Heidi was taken tragically, purposely, and violently from her loving family and friends, our shining vital star fallen. The universe forever changed. This ultimate betrayal allegedly from the person who vowed to love, honor, and protect her. After such a life-altering event, you question your faith, spirituality, and look for answers that you may never receive and wonder why. Although you grieve the wonderful memories of the past, you also grieve for the future denied you. All of the plans, a trip to the aquarium, birthdays shared in San Diego, haunted houses for Halloween, memories to make, all erased by an act of domestic violence. Thankfully, my belief system is a great comfort and blessing. We strongly believe that one glorious day, we will be together with Heidi once more. Our family chooses to memorialize Heidi and to get a, dedicate our time, energy, and resources to bring awareness to this domestic violence cycle. Through education, vigilance, and empowerment, we could make the difference. Every year in September, our family will have an awareness event, Hike for Heidi. All donations are given to the YWCA for the Women in Jeopardy program. The first hike was held six weeks after we lost Heidi. The hike for Heidi has been an important healing journey for my family and other special supportive friends. You know how, who you are and how much you are loved. Next year, we hope to grow our hike in my daughter's honor to always remember her sacrifice. One is too many. Thank you. Thank you, Janet, and to all of your family for being here. I am honored to stand with all of you this morning, these good gentlemen behind me and, and Janet and her family, uh, to acknowledge all of those that we have lost um, to gun violence. I think it's also incredibly meaningful that we're gathered here on this ground and at this place that is dedicated for the safety of Salt Lake City residents. During this week, the International Week Without Violence. The YWCA has been in this community for over 100 years, addressing needs of women and children in their quest to find education, equality, community, and safety. Today, the YWCA is Utah's oldest, largest, and most comprehensive provider of shelter, transitional housing, supportive services, and education for men, women, and children who have been affected by abuse. What we know from our years of experience is that domestic violence touches all of us. Families, schools, neighborhoods, churches, communities. It doesn't discriminate by socioeconomic status, race, religion, or gender. And that unfortunately, our local statistics match national statistics, which is that one in four women will be impacted by domestic violence at some point in her life. One thing we have learned during that amount of time in this community is that we could not do it without each of you. Too many of you have sisters, daughters, brothers, or friends who are being impacted today by violence in the home. What I want you to remember is that you have the ability to make a difference in their life. You have the ability to be a glimmer of hope for individuals who may literally be lost in darkness and you do not have to be an expert to do it. Here are five things 
that you could say to someone who's experiencing domestic violence. I'm afraid for your safety and for the safety of your children. It's not your fault. You do not deserve to be abused or to be unhappy. We are here to help you whenever you're ready. How can we help? Don't underestimate that your simple offerings of support, often needed on more than one, three, or 12 occasions, can literally save a life. Be the kind of friend that will take the hand of a victim that needs it and reaches out for support. To any of you that are feeling unsafe at home, the YWCA is here for you. We are afraid for your safety and for the safety of your children. You do not deserve to be abused or unhappy. It's not your fault. We are here to help you. How can we help? Two important resources at the YWCA that are always available to you. Walk-in services at the Salt Lake Area Family Justice Center located on our campus is available Monday through Friday from nine to five. Additionally, a 24-hour hotline is available for anyone seeking services or anyone wanting to talk about supporting a friend or a family member. Today, we plant daffodils in remembrance of those that we've lost. For me, they also serve as a symbol of hope. They represent a brighter future for each woman, man, and child struggling in a home where abuse is present and a colorful reminder of how precious each life is in our community. I hope for you, friends and family, that they will represent a commitment to offer support to a loved one, to provide that safe haven, to model what healthy and loving relationships really look like. And I hope for anyone experiencing abuse that they remind you that hope is not just a dream, it's your birthright. The YWCA Utah is grateful to stand with such important partners in the efforts to stop violence in our home and as a result in our community. We thank all of you for your participation in these same efforts and encourage you to do your best to plant the seed in making the world a little bit safer for all of us. Thanks. Uh, thank you, Chief Burbank, uh, Council Chair LaMalfa, uh, Carrie, and especially uh, to Janet for sharing her story and her family's story with Heidi. Uh, I think all of us who have been fortunate enough not to be exposed directly uh, to gun violence and domestic violence uh, can sometimes forget uh, the horror it reaps uh, to individuals and to families and to the community as a whole. And I'm grateful that Janet had the courage to step forward and to tell her story and her family's story uh, to help us remember uh, the, the conditions that some people face in a very private way often and only those closest to those individuals know what may be happening. I appreciate Carrie and the YWCA for their long-standing commitment and services and all of the folks who support YWCA in providing a place of shelter and refuge. Uh, let me thank uh, the folks who have been responsible for today's event, the YWCA of Utah, Salt Lake City Police Department, our City Council, uh, the City Fire Department, uh, the Gun Violence Prevention Center of Utah, and the Salt Lake City Parks Division, and specifically Marianne Siegendorf, who helped us prepare the grounds for today's event. Um, a special thanks for the folks who donated the daffodils today, YWCA and Home Depot. And I also want to recognize uh, a couple of folks who I see here today who I know have spent much of their lives for decades now addressing violence and gun violence. I see Gary Sackett here and I see Mr. and Mrs. Mullen and thank you for your ongoing work um, to help us. <laughs> So we invite all of you to stay and to help us plant daffodils in honor of family, friends, and the community members uh, who have suffered from acts of gun violence. Thank you for joining us today. <laughs>